Let's get crazy. Hey, giant frogs and junkyard dogs. Welcome to another seven minute sermon and another installment of our series, Fruit of the Spirit. <sighs> Whoop. Today we are eating the fruit or the cookie. Today we are talking about self-control. Control of the self. Speaking of, when most of us, including myself, think about self-control, we think of it like self-reliance or self-esteem. We are reliant on our self. The esteem comes from our self. The control comes from our self. In reality though, self-control is very different. The control doesn't come from the self, but it is actually the self that has to be controlled. The self is not the weapon with which we fight this battle. The self is actually the enemy. It is not about a control that comes from oneself. It is about controlling one's self. Should I say self one more time? So, in the Gospels, Jesus speaks about the importance of denying ourselves. In Luke chapter 9, Jesus famously says, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. And he speaks about this in even harsher terms in Matthew 5. If your right eye causes your left eye to sin, tear it out and throw it away. In these verses, we see evidence that self-control is a denial of oneself rather than a reliance on oneself. And the fact that self-control is listed as a fruit of the spirit supports this claim even further. If the power of control came from ourselves, Paul wouldn't have listed it as a fruit of the spirit. The very fact that this virtue is included on this list points to the reality that the power needed to obtain self-control in our lives can only be given by the spirit of Christ working in our minds and hearts. Which brings me to my second point. Self-control is more than just saying no. The virtue of self-control was being taught long before it was ever included in the Bible. But the difference between worldly self-control and Christian self-control is the source and the credit. What I mean by source is where does the power come from? Is your control a result of nothing more than buckling down or gutting it out by your own power? Or are you relying on the power of Christ that dwells within you to fight your battles? The power of Christ compels you! The Bible certainly teaches that we have a part to play in self-control, but ultimately the true power that we will need comes from the spirit working within us. And when we talk about credit, what we're really asking is who gets the glory. When you overcome by self-control, do you celebrate it because you did it by your own power and your own grit? Or do you give glory to God who graciously gave you the self-control that you needed in order to fight that temptation? As we've seen, self-control does not come from the self. Rather, it is a fruit produced by the spirit working within us. Thanks, Christ. And self-control begins to take root within us when we truly begin to believe that the promise of God is greater than the promise of sin. Temptation always comes with a promise. It promises that sinful activity will make us feel good or that it will make everything easy. It promises that no one will find out, that it'll make you feel better, that it will fulfill you. And when we believe the promises of temptation, we have absolutely no chance at being self-controlled. But when we choose instead to believe the promises of God, the promise of eternal life, then self-control begins to take root in us by his spirit. Self-control means foregoing what is convenient and easy in order to pursue what is eternal and good. And by the way, this is not an option for Christians. Self-control is listed right alongside virtues like love and faithfulness. You know, the big ones. The utter importance of self-control in the Christian life is evidenced all throughout scripture. And it is the climax of Paul's list of fruits. And I think that perhaps Paul saves this for last because when we master this virtue, 
then we begin to make room for all the other fruits to take root as well. When we learn to be self-controlled, we are able to steer clear of the sin that so easily entangles so that we can be fully open to God's spirit moving and growing in our minds and hearts. In a way, self-control is kind of like a gateway drug. It's a gateway fruit. It moves us into experiencing all the other fruits of the spirit. So go out there and control yourselves, kids, or allow God to give you the power by his spirit to exercise self. You get it. Hey friends, thank you so much for watching this seven minute sermon. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was encouraging. I hope it was enlightening. At long last, we are coming to the end of our Fruit of the Spirit series. We have one more fruit to cover and I promise you it's gonna be a good one. So make sure you tune in next month. But don't wait till then, tune in next week. Wednesday, I have a new day in the word and next Friday, I have another video coming for you all. And if you're not subscribed to Jorgen Fam, you should check out our vlogs because they're pretty fun, I think. That is all I have for you. If you're not subscribed to this channel or Jorgen Fam, subscribe to them both. Also follow me on Instagram at John Jorgensen. I love you all. Keep being awesome.